Hello again everybody and welcome to another video. It has unfortunately been a couple of weeks since I've been able to post anything because I have been really busy with work lately, but I am getting some time to finally make another video for you guys and today we're actually tackling a pretty big question because we're looking at the difference between horsepower and torque. What do these things mean in terms of internal combustion engines and is one better for performance than the other? start by defining what each of these two terms are, beginning with horsepower. Horsepower is a measure of the amount of work that your engine can do over a given amount of time. Work is a measure of change in energy. In the case of internal combustion engines, we're trying to change the chemical potential energy of fuel into kinetic energy, which is the car's movement. So this is really a measure of how quickly can we accelerate the vehicle, sort of. We'll get into that a little bit more later. But we can also sometimes describe horsepower as a measure of force times velocity. Now the math there can be a little bit funny just because of the mechanics of the transmission and a bunch of other things that go into it. But it's also sort of a nice way to think about power. Now, compact vehicles and sports cars are going to tend to want engines that are geared towards horsepower instead of torque. This typically comes from lower compression ratios, such as 11 to 1 in the case of my 370Z where you will have a shorter stroke. The reason why in vehicles geared towards horsepower you want a shorter stroke is because that will allow the engine to rev up a little bit higher given the materials or whatever it is that you use to build the piston. And with higher RPMs, you're able to burn off more fuel because you will be injecting fuel more frequently into the cylinder. So you will tend to have shorter crankshafts to allow for that increased RPM, but the shorter crankshaft also means that you're going to have a little less torque. So now we'll go ahead and talk about torque. Torque can be thought of as a rotational force, which is described as a force that is applied at a distance. The equation being tau, representing torque, is equal to perpendicular force, the upside down t means perpendicular, times the distance at which the force is applied. You often hear about torques when you're loosening or tightening bolts, so you will use a socket wrench and you can calculate the amount of torque by looking at the amount of force applied perpendicular to the handle times the distance between where you applied that force and the axis of rotation. And then sometimes if you need a little more torque, you'll step up your game a little bit and you'll go for something a little bit larger. So in this case, I have a torque wrench which is maybe about 18 inches between the axis of rotation here and the handle. And if I wanted to calculate the amount of torque I'm applying, let's say I put 100 pounds of force on the handle, we would multiply 100 for the pounds of force times the distance, which is one and a half feet. We would get 150 foot-pounds of torque. So this is how torque is often calculated, and this assumes that it's applied perpendicular to the handle, but if the direction in which you're applying your force is offset a little bit, you'll need to include this sine theta term to account for that angle. So in the case of a uh, engine with an internal combustion engine will have maybe this direction of force here being applied from the connecting rod onto the crankshaft here and it's offset by some angle theta. Now vehicles that are geared towards torque are often going to have much longer strokes than other engines because the increased stroke means you're applying your force further out on the crankshaft. But this increased stroke also means that you can't rev as high. And with less revs, you can't inject as much fuel into the engine over a given amount of time. And this means that the vehicles that are in a similar configuration, maybe with the same displacement as another engine with a shorter stroke, are going to have less horsepower. But they will have more torque. So, now that we've gone over both the terms, we want to kind of figure out, okay, which one of these is more responsible for acceleration? And are they related to each other? Well, we described horsepower as change in energy over change in time, and that kind of describes how much kinetic energy we can put into the vehicle. But torque is also described by force, and an equation that we often use for acceleration, relating force and acceleration, is F equals ma. So this might make you think, okay, maybe torque is responsible for acceleration. So what's going on here? Well, first we got to look at how the two things are related. So to look at horsepower and torque from a performance standpoint and figure out which one would actually be better for you in, let's say, a drag racing scenario, we're going to line up two cars. One a sports car that has about 250 horsepower and about 200 pound-feet of torque. 
versus a diesel powered vehicle which only has 200 horsepower and 250 foot pounds of torque. So here we have maybe what might be the torque curves and horsepower curves for both of these. The dotted lines here will represent our torque and the solid lines are horsepower. Um, to get an idea of how these are calculated, um, you need to look at the equation for horsepower and torque and how they're related. Horsepower is actually equal to torque times the RPM times 2 pi divided by 33,000. Um, those constants come from an experiment that was done by the gentleman who actually created the unit for horsepower back in the early 1800s, I think it was, um, involving a pony and some rocks, I think. Um, but he came up with this unit for power, and you need to use these constants to be able to relate it to foot-pounds of torque. Um, this equation can be simplified to simply the torque times the RPM divided by 5,252. So when you go and measure your car's horsepower on a dyno, what actually occurs is they go and measure the torque first at the wheels by figuring out how much force it is applying to the dyno itself, and then they are able to go and extrapolate the horsepower by multiplying it by the RPM range at that given point. So looking at these curves, we can see the higher peak torque on our diesel-powered vehicle at 250 versus 200 from our sports car. And what's interesting with a lot of these torque curves is if you have higher peak torque, you'll also often see that torque curve kind of fade off a little bit, while the torque for the vehicle with the higher horsepower is actually going to be a little more sustained throughout the entire RPM range. And then we, of course, see our higher peak horsepower in our sports car versus in our diesel-powered vehicle. One thing to note is the horsepower is usually occurring at a peak greater than uh, about 5200 rpms it's going to be later in the rev range whereas your peak torque is going to happen earlier in the rev range and there's an interesting thing to note is whenever you're looking at a torque and horsepower curve you will oftentimes see the torque and horsepower curve cross over at around 5200 rpm because at that rpm range this crosses out with that constant and your horsepower is equal to your torque meaning that they cross over so now we need to look at these and determine which vehicle is actually going to win the race. So um, what's important when talking about the amount of force that's being applied to you and therefore the acceleration is going to be a torque measurement. So um, if we look at these two, um, in a given gear ratio, if they both have the same gear ratio, let's say one to one, you're going to see about 200 foot-pounds of torque applied in the sports car versus the diesel is actually going to get 250 feet um, foot-pounds of torque at that RPM range. So we might think, okay, well, if that's the case, and if diesel is, or, sorry, if torque is related to acceleration, we might think that our diesel-powered vehicle is going to win the race. But the mechanics of acceleration are a little bit more complicated than that, because if a vehicle, such as our sports car, can use uh, gear ratios to leverage that torque and multiply it out, it can actually get more acceleration at a higher RPM range. So, if maybe we're at a certain speed and a one-to-one -one gear ratio that puts us at 4,000 RPM, uh, you might think that's where the peak acceleration is going to occur. But our peak acceleration actually occurs later in the rev range at our peak horsepower. So here, if we downshift, we're going to go to a more aggressive gear ratio, 1.75 in this case, and we want to see what our torque looks like then. So if we look at our diesel-powered vehicle, uh, the torque is going to be about 150 at around 7,000 RPM. You multiply that 150 by the 1.75 for the torque multiplier, you get 260 pound-feet of torque, more than 250. So for maximum acceleration, you actually want to be up here. But now if we look at our sports car, the fact that the torque curve is continuing to remain fairly level here means that we are still at uh, maybe about 175 foot-pounds of torque. And if we multiply that out, we actually get 300 pound-feet of torque total when multiplied through all of our uh, transmission and our final uh, drive ratio. So that means that the sports car with more horsepower is actually going to win the race because it's going to have more acceleration in those higher RPM ranges. So if you can manipulate your torque figures using a transmission, is there any point to getting a vehicle that has a higher torque figure? Shouldn't you just always go for a vehicle that is built for horsepower? Well, you can match the same sort of torque figures, so to speak, using gear ratios, but in order to do that, you have to make more aggressive gear ratios in your transmission. 
So if I wanted a car that has the same sort of torque to the wheels as a truck, I would have to use a lot of high ratio gears and that means more gears in my transmission, which means more shifting, and that means the transmission itself becomes heavier, becomes larger, and then my car is gonna become a lot heavier, sort of defeating the purpose of you know, a compact vehicle, or in the case of drag racing, you don't want a whole bunch of uh, gears if you can avoid it, because it means that you have to have those pauses in between shifts. So in that case, you wanna go for a vehicle that's already built for a higher torque figure because then you don't have to have all of those extra gear ratios in the vehicle. Now, sometimes this is unavoidable. In the case of semis, you may have 10, 11, even 12 gear ratios. You might have that many different gears and then you're constantly just having to shift to make sure that you stay on top of the torque curve where you wanna be. But that is it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope this has cleared up the difference between horsepower and torque. And of course, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below or let me know if you think I've explained something wrong and I will see y'all in the next video. Later.